In this section we're just going to take a quick look at the manipulation of one or two of these images but I have to tell you straight away it's not a difficult process. We could use Lightroom, Photoshop or Photoshop Elements and we would get a superb result in any of those three pieces of software. Let me show you what I have on the left hand side. If you look carefully at the dates here, this is all 2017 and May. I shot some images on the 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th. Must have had a day off on the 14th. Shot some more on the 15th, another day off on the 16th. Shot some more on the 17th and the 18th. So I just did a little bit each day until I felt I'd had enough. No need to make this a marathon. You need to enjoy your photography and what you're doing to produce your best work. This was my first folder of images just to test the concept and you can see I've got that graduated background we can easily make within our image editor in the first few images here. I've got a blurred version of an inside of a hot air balloon and a couple of images of hot air balloons just use as straight images and as you can see one or two others with just a plain black background to see how that worked. By the way, in this sort of shot here, what I've done is the background I have created a black square in the middle more or less 3-2 aspect ratio so the glass is standing in front of a black background but on the monitor and just out of shot this area and this area will be white so the light is coming from that little slither of white on the left and right edge of my monitor and that works quite well as you can see I think the next batch I moved on to a series of close-ups and you can see I was experimenting with all sorts of things here but I think we'll move on further and look at some of the individual glasses there's one or two of the other close-ups you can see how quick and easy it is to shoot different versions by changing the background slide on the monitor and pressing the cable release let's move on and there we start to see the first introduction of some of the glasses. One or two of the backgrounds here I felt were a little bit too fussy for my liking, but certainly worth experimenting. And a few that didn't work at all well. We need a different way of coming at this if you want to have shapes reflected into reflective objects. Let's move on to the next one. I think we'll pick one of these and there you can see a batch of images and I think we could pick any one of these and I think I've done this one in the slideshow or it may have been this one given the objects there so let's turn to this one which I have not worked through at all first thing you may notice that I did slip off the edge here a little bit now I was aware of that as I was shooting the images but it's no great problem so here I have a raw file one of the things that we need to pay attention to, I think, when we've got a line in the background caused by the black perspex, is that we do try to get that maybe a third of the way up if we can. It depends what we're doing, but if we get it a third of the way up, of course it's going to meet our composition rules. I think I've got a bit of a slope here as well. Well, let's open this up into Camera Raw and we'll deal with those problems. One of the first things I would always do when opening up any raw file is go to the lens corrections and remove any chromatic aberration and quite often I enable the profile corrections but sometimes when I did this here it did brighten up the edges which just meant I had to darken them down so it wasn't very significant with what I was doing here so whether we tick that box or not in my case didn't make too much of a difference. I also created a number of these images for a slideshow. Now slideshows are made at 16:9 aspect ratio. So if I felt I had room around the image to create my 16:9 while in camera raw, then I would often do that. Now the images we get from a typical digital SLR are 3:2 aspect ratio. So if we're trying to squeeze those into a 16:9 slideshow, if we've got the content of the image filling the screen a little bit too well, then that can be a bit tricky. But in that case, 
I tend to do my cropping in Photoshop where I can distort the image a little bit and it doesn't hurt at all. But let's see if we can get away with straightening the background and also cropping at the same time. So I'm going to go up to the top of my crop tool and I'm going to set it for 16.9. I'm going to assume we're making a slideshow image here but it doesn't matter even if we're not you could leave it set to normal but I'm going to choose that and also the straighten tool here. I'm going to draw a line across that background to tell Photoshop that part needs to be straight. Now you can see what I mean about the 16-9 aspect ratio. I do have a wee problem here because I'd like to have a little bit more of the base, perhaps something like that, and I'm getting too close to the top. So on this particular occasion, I would escape away from that. I'll do the cropping in Photoshop in a moment, and you'll see the difference between the two. The next thing I'm going to do is any spotting of the image. I generally don't worry too much about trying to find every single spot and blemish while I'm working in RAW because we can do these or fix these problems equally easy in RAW and in Photoshop. But I am going to show you a nice little dodge later on which is very interesting to see. So I'm going to start by going to my spot removal tool and down to the bottom of the options here I've got a little box visualize spots. You can see what it does. It changes the way the background or the image looks, enables us to spot the little marks in the background very, very easily. So I'm just going to drop the size of my brush down and I'm going to just click around to fix these. Now sometimes I find it's actually quicker to touch the V key. The V key just gets rid of these little rings and the bounding box. Because I've got so much confidence in this tool, I don't worry too much until I get the image open again and as you can see I can just click around here and fix all of the little problems I feel I may have and some of them may not hardly be visible on the final image but it takes so few seconds to fix these problems I think it's much better to do them while we can here and then we'll mop up any that slip through the net a little bit later on when we open Photoshop. You'll notice that there was a, or you may have noticed, let me untick that for a moment, there's a little bit of a smudge up here and one here. So I'm going to fix those here. I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. They're little marks on the monitor actually and I'm going to do one down there. They're the, some of the faults I've got on this monitor but good enough for what we're doing here. So that's cleaned up the picture pretty well. Now I need to get back to my row of options along the top here and I tend to just touch the H key for the hand tool and that takes me back and I can go back to the basic tab. In my general photography one of my favourite tools is clarity but I found with the glass that I tend not to need it and it doesn't actually do us any favours so I've been staying away from that for the most part. Of course it's going to be quite personal whether we introduce a bit more colour or a bit less colour. We're all going to have personal choice. I'm going to just push a little bit more colour into that. But what I'm doing now is looking up at the histogram. But I've got a fair spread of tones here. So I don't feel that I need to introduce any whites into this or any more whites into this. But if I want to make sure that I've got as much white or as much light here I can just hold the Alt key, click, and you can see that little streak of red. It's just showing me I'm beginning to lose it along there, but visually we can't see that at all. Does that make a difference? Hardly makes a difference at all, does it? But personal choice, I'll take it anyway. Maybe I'll lean on the blacks a little bit, which is something I like to do, but I don't really feel we need to do anything more with this image. So I think we can just open up the image into Photoshop. Now I always open up my images as Smart Objects. Smart Object is a setting in RAW and it enables me when I go to my layers here. There it is, Smart Object. What it enables me to do if I change my mind, I can double click this image. I can go back into Camera RAW and I can make change on top of change on top of change and of course there's no downsides for doing that. 
If you want to turn your smart objects on, it's via the hyperlink at the bottom of the screen here. There it is, right down the bottom. So on this occasion, I'll cancel all those and we'll pick up where we left off in Photoshop and I'll hit Control zero to fit the image on screen. Now let's deal with this cropping issue first. If I pick up my crop tool from the toolbox, from the options here I can select 16.9, much the same as we did in Camera Raw. And when I do that we can be reminded of the problem we had in Camera Raw that I'd like a little bit more space at the top. I feel it's all a little bit too cramped here. So what I'm going to do is just distort the image a little bit. So I'm going to come away from that. I'm going to go to my free transform tool. Control T is the shortcut, but edit free transform. And I'm just going to drag down the top a wee bit. You can see it doesn't do any significant damage to the image that we've shot. So now I can go back to my crop tool. I'll stay with the 16.9, we'll click into the picture, oh one thing I've forgotten is to straighten up the background, so let me back away from that, select the crop tool, we'll go to the straighten tool here, we'll draw a line which works much the same as camera raw, so there we're saying that bit should be straight. So now I've got a little bit more space to play with, so I can fiddle around, and I think I'm going to live with something, I'm going to deliberately leave a little bit of black around the edge there. See the black around the edge and the black around the edge here, we're going to deal with that a little bit later on. So don't worry too much about that. Let's hit the tick to commit that change. Now although I open this image up as a smart object, I don't think I really need it as a smart object anymore. So I'm going to rasterize it, I'm going to go to the right of my thumbnail, right click and rasterize to put it back to a standard layer. But what I think I'll also do is I'll put a new blank layer over the top and we'll do the repairs onto that. I'm going to pick up my spot healing brush. Let's deal with this little bit over here, a little slither down on the right hand side. We do need to make sure up here that we have content aware selected and we have the tick that says sample all layers. So I'm just going to paint down that area and that's fixed. We've got a bit of a mark here so I'm going to try and do this in one go. Making my brush just cover that bit here, clicking, holding the shift key and clicking right down here and that did a pretty good job. I hope you'll agree. I'm just looking carefully and I think I'm more or less happy with that. And in fact, buoyed up with that, let's see if we can do this down the left hand side. You can see I'm making my brush a little bit bigger. I'm clicking at the top, holding the shift key, clicking at the bottom, giving Photoshop a few seconds to work. Thank you very much, it's done a grand job. If you look carefully at my background over here, you can see that I did make a little mistake here. I've got the edge of my perspex showing. I should have shunted it all to the left. And these are the little things sometimes you don't always spot when you're concentrating so much on what you're doing with the glasses. But I think we can repair that pretty easy with a little bit of copy and paste. And please don't think that these techniques are reserved for still life shooting of glass. The sort of technique I'm about to do here is one that I use over and over and over again on all sorts of images. I'm going to pick up my freehand lasso tool I think. I'm just going to draw a line or a little selection around here. Don't want to get too close to the glass. I need to feather the edge of that selection, soften it. Select and mask will do that. Feather is what I want. How much do I need? Well we just give it a calculated guess stepping it up until I see something like that. That should be soft enough on the background that we've got. Click OK to that. Now I need to copy what's inside of that selection to a new layer. Control J will do that, but Edit Copy, Edit Paste will always do that. Now that's telling me I've forgotten to select the other layer. So let's OK that, go to my layers, 
and select this because I've got my repairs done on this one so maybe a good idea if I actually put them both together let's merge those before we go any further so as I was about to say edit copy edit paste or control J pick up your move tool and I'm not gonna use my click and drag I'm gonna use my left arrow key on the keyboard and I'm gonna try and move that to the left you can see it march into the left I think if I was being super critical it's just a little bit paler so bring up your levels control L I've used here put your cursor into the mid-tone section and just use the up and down arrow and you'll soon see how you can do minute adjustments here until you get a perfect result and you cannot see anything and there we have that background fixed seem to have lost my little fix over on the right hand side but we won't worry too much about that we can fix that with a touch of the brush and we're bound to need the brush elsewhere but now I can go back and amalgamate these two together just holding the control key select both right click and merge the layers I'll pick up that tool oh it's it's fixed it again so I'm not sure exactly what's happening there one of those weird display issues little bit of black at the top there I'll just touch that and that didn't work too well at all did it if you ever use the spot healing brush and it doesn't work as expected switch to the healing brush bring the image up a little bigger now we can take a sample with the alt click 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 and it will usually do what the spot healing brush can't do and it's having a bit of difficulty here and I'm not entirely sure why let's switch back but these things are sent to try us come on fix it for me okay all else fails go to the clone stamp shouldn't be too difficult to do this there we go so there's our image completed now one of the options I did turn to before I saved a finished image I often enhance the color in a local area now here we've got this lovely peach colored background we've got good color coming through the glass but if we go to our dodge and burn tool and our sponge tool if we select the sponge tool from the options at the top of the screen select saturate and maybe this is one of the times when we can push the saturation up to 30 or 40 percent making my brush a little bigger here because I, I would often just enhance maybe that peachy color maybe maybe that's a little bit higher I should drop it down a little bit if you look at the stem of the glass for example I would normally make the glass much bigger and do this very carefully but to keep things quick and simple you can see I'm just enhancing that warm tone because I think it goes so well with the cool tones of the green and the mauve and there's a little sliver there and along the edge so I would do these by bringing this up very big dropping the brush down just being a little bit careful but here's another little tip when you're working on images sometimes we work better at different angles so if we had a piece of artwork and we was making a drawing we would turn the paper in front of us around we can do that in Photoshop and I found this to be quite useful it's with the hand tool there it is rotate view As soon as I've got that you can see what I can do I can then press the space bar and move this down so I can move this into a nice comfortable position I can go back to my sponge tool and I can start or continue working where I wanted to work in a much more convenient fashion and when I was finished I can double click and I'll hit control zero and there we have a finished image I'm sure you watched the introduction already but just in case you've come straight to this video and not seen the previous the bend in the stem of the glass was just done with a blow lamp and in fact it's a blow lamp we use around the barbecue for cooking a little bit of heat on the stem and the glass gradually will bend just adds a little bit of interest I felt 
So the manipulation of the glass images is pretty easy and the most work I did was repairing things which really I should have spotted before I pressed the shutter, but that's life.